a last minute do-it-yourself contract review right on the dealer's lot. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, here today with amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. It's time for you to buckle up for another edition of the homework guy show. Today, we're going to share with you how to do some last minute due diligence on your car deal. Some of you find it very hard to just sit there and finance and take your time to carefully read through the car contract to make sure you didn't get hoodwinked on something. What Kevin's talking about is something that he routinely recommended to his own customers to do when he was working on a dealer car lot. Since he couldn't stop the finance office from ripping them off, he coached his customers on what to look for and told them how to comb over their contracts outside the influence of the finance office. Admittedly, it does make the dealer and the finance officer a bit nervous, and they did get ticked off at him more than once. More than once. You see, there are a number of components to a legal contract that you must understand. They include one, offer, two, acceptance, and three, consideration. Those are the big three, but there are also these categories, intent to create legal relations, authority and capacity, and certainty. More on these last three in a moment. These essential contract elements are absolutely necessary to make a contract legally binding. The offer by the dealer happened when they proposed a given price on the vehicle you're purchasing. Right. Acceptance happened when you agreed to that price without a counter offer, and then you sat down in finance to sign out on your car. But until your back tires roll out of the parking lot, the requirements of consideration have not been met, and you are also not agreeing to every condition they spelled out on the contract, and subsequently, there is no binding agreement in place yet. Most importantly, you haven't taken delivery of the car yet. Consideration, as defined in contract law, is the voluntary exchange of something of value, in this case, a car. Totally. And until you leave the dealers a lot with this vehicle, you haven't fulfilled this important step of the contract. Without delivery of the vehicle, which means your taillights aren't headed down the road yet, the paperwork or the electronic file the dealer gave you on a USB drive isn't legally binding on you yet. What Kevin is saying is that you can pull your vehicle over to the side of the dealer's parking lot, parking inside the limits of dealer property, turn on your dome lights, and take your time reading through all the fine print of your contract. We even suggest reading it out loud so you can both read and hear the words. If you have a spouse or a friend with you, it's even better. This is much more relaxing because there's no finance man or salesman breathing down your neck, making comments in the attempt to break your focused attention on the details. That's right. I even suggest taking a charged up laptop with you or have an available charger in your vehicle in case the dealer gives you your contract on USB file. That way you don't have to worry about your laptop running out of gas. Then you don't have to wait until you get home to read it through. Bringing a laptop bag with you is a great idea because it's also a great place to keep copies of the FTC regs if you happen to need them and you can get things removed from your car contract. For better understanding of the legal components of a contract, here's a little bit more expansion on the elements of a legal contract as explained in a simple Google search. For a contract to be valid and recognized by the common law, it must include the elements I mentioned earlier, offer, acceptance, consideration, and intention to create legal relations, authority and capacity and certainty. Without these elements, a contract is not legally binding and may not be enforced by the courts. Offer is generally pretty easily understood. For there to be a contract, there must be an offer by one party and it's accepted by the other. If you counter offer and the dealer accepts your counter, then you are the one who sets the price and the dealer is the one accepting it. Acceptance is the agreement to the specific conditions of an offer. It must be unequivocal and must correspond with the contract terms of the offer. The offeree or the buyer can either accept the offer explicitly or implicitly. As Kevin explained earlier, consideration is what each party to the contract gives up or promises to do to form the contract. It can be something of value such as money, goods, services, or like a car, for example. To be legally binding, a contract must show an intention to create legal relations. This can be shown by the use of formal language such as, I agree to, or this contract is binding on the parties. Yeah. Dealers are generally pretty careful to make sure their contract meets this standard. The reason why intent is important is because it demonstrates the seriousness of the party's intention to accept both the benefits and the obligations of the agreement. If one side does not agree to every condition, and that's what you're doing by sitting out in the parking lot and reading through your contract, there is no binding agreement. Then there's authority and capacity. Contract law judges the circumstances for a party to contract. Each party to the contract must have the legal capacity to enter into the mutual assent. This indicates that they must be of legal age and have the mental capacity to understand the terms of the contract. Interestingly, we receive reports quite often from family members of a mentally handicapped person who went to a dealership and got swindled. A contract drafted under such circumstances can be canceled. 
And finally, there's certainty to be enforceable. A contract must include certain terms and the ability to fulfill the essential terms of an agreement must be guaranteed. These terms must be clear and unambiguous. Yeah. Everything in your contract must be easily understood for it to be legally binding. Back in just a moment after this message from our very own Mary Jo. Hello, I am Mary Jo from the Homework Guy team. Don't Kevin and Elizabeth do a great job? We are so proud of every show our team puts out carefully researched for accuracy and designed to help car buyers just like you. If you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below and ring the bell so you get notifications of upcoming shows. Thank you for listening. And by the way, if you haven't already noticed, check out the light pattern on our ceiling. Pretty cool, huh? To sum it up, it is important to know these elements of a contract because they determine whether or not a contract is legal. If one or more of these elements is missing, then the contract may be void or unenforceable. If you have doubts that your car contract fails to meet the basic standards of a contract and it's after the fact, we recommend contacting a good consumer protection attorney. We have our good friend Dan Whitney in Maryland, and it's possible that he may have a referral to a good attorney in your state. All right, now let's assume you've taken the time to read through your contract and you find things you object to, that's almost guaranteed to be the case. Yeah. Finance offices are known for their errors. After seeing our video with Sweet Lillian, our viewer Anders Peterson commented, I once had the contract sent back three times due to errors. After the fourth printout, before he handed it to me, I said, if there is one more item on that I will object to, I am walking away from this sale. He tore it up and printed a fifth one. Such a con artist. There are never errors. There are only intentional attempts to deceive you and defraud you. So you discover intentional errors like Anders mentioned. What should you do next? Pull your car up to the front door of the dealership. Believe me, they've noticed that you've been sitting out there in your vehicle. Yes, They're they getting have. concerned and have been wondering what's up. Drive right up to the front door and head to the finance office you left a short time ago. Don't be surprised to see somebody else already sitting there. If the finance officer who signed you out isn't immediately available, Go find your salesman and let him or her know that there are changes that must be made. Use the word must. Make it very clear that you are not leaving until your contract is fixed. If the salesman inquires about what the problems are, feel free to answer their questions. Be direct and be clear that you are ready to walk away. They will give the finance office a heads up that you're back and you need specified changes. At this point, many factors are in your favor. Not only do you have time invested in this car deal, but so do they. A deal that blows up either in finance or shortly after signing out, like in this case, it's always an emergency that they want to get fixed. You have the finance officer over a barrel and they know it. All the big, huge smiles are wiped off their faces <laughs> as they know they are in trouble, caught by a customer who didn't take things for granted. And all of the times before when they were likely in control of the deal, right now you are squarely in the driver's seat. Be direct and show some impatience. Maybe it's fees that you're objecting to. Maybe the finance officer said, hey, don't worry about the cost of the extended warranty. I'll give it to you for free. They yeah. do that all the time. And then you find a charge for it when you reviewed your contract. The video we did with Lillian titled, Lillian defeats dealer finance officer and car salesman is something every one of you should see. You know what the difference between Lillian and some of you? Lillian believed us. She took the example Elizabeth provided in the finance office. She printed out the FTC regs on our website and she got a great car deal that she saved $3,869 in add-ons on. I hope you guys found today's show helpful. I'd like to take a moment to alert our newest viewers that you can also check us out on Facebook. Please drop by, give us a comment and a post and give us a like and follow. And don't forget to come to our website, thehomeworkguy.com. When you get there, scroll down the main page to find tons of free downloads designed to help you get through the car buying process without getting ripped off. It's loaded up with free resources for car buying viewers, and we now offer a blog post there too for those of you who would like to read. If you wish to show us some love with a tip, there's a super thanks button down below the video and there are links for tips in the description box. You can easily find them by clicking on the read more button down below. All right, if you're new here at the Homer Guy channel, as Mary Jo said, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. Join our fast growing group of subscribers and become a part of our family. Thanks everyone for coming back and to all of our faithful subscribers out there, you guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homer Guy, signing off with amazing Elizabeth, the Homer Gal. The Homer Guy team is serving truth and justice in the car business. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.